right. So we'll see one question from unit three. Okay, Karnataka okay. Land Revenue Act. We have revenue officers. Relating to them, we have this question. Okay, okay. yesterday we saw one revenue appellate tribunal from same unit three only. Today we have this powers and procedure of revenue officers. Okay, what powers are being given to revenue officers? So these are the powers that are being assigned to them. First of all, power to transfer cases. The regional of commissioner has the power to transfer any case of uh, any case or class of cases arising under this as in under this Karnataka Land Revenue Act. If any case has taken place or any class of cases has taken place, that from any revenue officer to any other revenue officer competent to deal with it in the same district or any other district in the same region. So cases may be transferred from one revenue officer to another revenue officer, maybe in the same district or might be in different uh, districts or some other region. If an application is made to him, and also if he opines that it is expedient to do so for the purpose of giving justice. So if a revenue officer feels that this thought in case should come before me or this thought in case should be decided by me, then the person can uh, make an application, okay, make an application for transfer of cases or maybe the parties to the dispute, right, they can also file an application and say that this matter should be transferred to you or you should be handling the case. There also revenue officer can ask for transfer of cases from another district or from another revenue officer to himself or herself. Similarly, the deputy commissioner has power to transfer any case or class of cases arising under this act for the sake of inquiry or decision from his own file or from the file of any other revenue officer subordinate to him to any other revenue officer subordinate to him and who is competent to deal with. So for the purpose of inquiry also maybe sometimes cases can be transferred. That as such, they don't need to give the decision, but the inquiry part may be done by the revenue officer. For that, it can be transferred or even for decision also it can be transferred to the person. Okay, from the deputy commissioner it can be transferred that you take the matter to decide this. Matter. So the person, revenue officer himself can request for transfer of cases, the disputing parties can request, or the deputy commissioner may himself uh, refer it for inquiry or for the purpose of decision making. Okay. This is the first power, power to transfer cases from some other revenue officer, from some other district, from some other uh, place it can be transferred. Then we have power to give summons. Okay. Every revenue officer, not below the rank of Tessindar, as we had seen, right, there are different revenue officers. Do you remember there was a big list of people? <laughs> right, so there we had an entire list, right? So not below the rank of Tessindar, whoever is there, they have power to take evidence on oath and to summon any person whose attendance is necessary, maybe for the purpose of examination as a party or to give evidence as a witness or to produce document for the purpose of any inquiry. So if the revenue officer feels that uh, attendance of this person is necessary for any purpose related to the case, there the person may be summoned by the revenue officer. So power to give summons, revenue officer is having that. Such officer is empowered to conduct and the summoned person is bound to attend either in person or through authorized agent. Just like how if court summons a person, the person need to appear. It's not optional, right? That I don't feel like going or something. Same happens for revenue officers also. If they have summoned, the summoned person is under an obligation to appear. He may appear in person or he may appear through an authorized agent as well. If any person fails to comply with summons to attend as a witness or to produce documents, sometimes maybe a person is not party to the case as such. Maybe the person is not a witness, but some important documents are with this person. 
and these documents are very much important for the revenue officer to have access to in order to give justice there are also disputing parties might inform the revenue officer that so and so document is with this person and that document will help you decide the case their revenue officer can summon the person that this sorted document is with you you come and you produce this document because it's needed for the purpose of this issue there also he has to complete the officer is empowered to issue a bailable warrant of arrest under him uh, to furnish security for appearance or impose fine upon him uh, a fine not exceeding 20 rupees so the person should appear if he is not appearing then warrant of arrest also may be issued should police officer may be directed that arrest this person and bring him to the court his presence is very much needed for the purpose of decision making right or if he is not appearing because he has violated the order given by revenue officer so revenue officer can impose fine as well like the amount is very less but still like it's a fine that is paid that matters right so this power is also given to him in case if the person whose evidence is required is unable to personally appear due to sickness or infirmity the officer uh, either of his own motion or on application of such party can exempt him from personal sometimes it might not be possible for the party to personally come and uh, appear in the uh, office right he might be an aged person might be because of sickness or some other reason there the person can inform that because of so and so reason i am not able to go or if the revenue officer himself feels then he might exempt him that okay fine personal appearance is not needed maybe we are sending some uh, officer from the office and you give the documents to this person or whatever applies that can be done over there okay so power to transfer cases power to give summons is it clear yes ma'am power to enter upon land so we are talking about revenues right so it is related to land uh, matters mm -hmm. so any revenue officer and his servants and workmen while under his uh, while under his observation and control have the power to enter any land or premises belonging to state government or to any other person for the purpose of measurement fixing inspection of boundaries classification of soil or assessment or for any other purpose connected with the lawful exercise of his powers under this act or under any law related now i mentioned right revenue officers will also do measurements of the uh, plot of land like if i want to construct a house i have a plot of land but i do not know the exact boundary of my land their revenue officer is going to help me for the purpose they need to come and they need to enter upon the land in order to measure my plot of land revenue officer will have to enter my neighbor's plot of land also right to properly measure it so there other person cannot say it is trespass or something this power has been given to the revenue officer so that they can perform their functions properly okay so for different purposes whatever powers are given to revenue officer they can enter upon land whether government land private land it, it is given to them but to enter any building as a dwelling house or upon any enclosed court or garden attached to a dwelling house the consent of the occupier must be obtained by giving 7 days prior notice just because it is said that you can enter any plot it does not mean that revenue officer would simply enter a dwelling house what is dwelling house uh, a place where people stay correct place where people stay it's about their privacy also right a random person cannot simply enter just because he is a revenue officer right so it is said that you need to give notice in such cases if people are living there or if you want to enter the garden of a, a dwelling house or any other place like that there you need to give notice and after that you can enter but if it's like an empty plot of land as such you don't need to look for the owner give notice or something it's just like a uh empty field right so there you can enter and you can do the measurements like in an undeveloped area right where no development has taken place 
just like I've seen lots of friends, there as such you don't need to take permission or something. Yeah. Okay, power of eviction. So deputy commissioner has the power to evict any person who is lawfully in possession of land or where any order to deliver possession of the land has been passed against any person under this act by serving notice on the person. Maybe sometimes we see, right, one person is illegally staying in somebody else's property. And court has said that you need to vacate this plot because it, it's it's not yours, yours, but it belongs to someone else. Even after that, if the person is not vacating, revenue officer may be given the power that you go and you ask this person to leave, you evict this person and uh, whoever is having rightful possession, that person will stay. Sometimes we see evictions take place in government plots of land also, right? Government land may be there. People were residing there illegally by constructing some, you know, like small houses and stuff. Government says we need this land for so-and-so development purpose. Eviction, oh, we need to evict the people. And there also, mm -hmm. it is there. Summons and notices. Every notice under this act is to be served by tendering or delivering a copy thereof to the person on whom it is, uh, it has to be served or his agent or by affixing a copy to some conspicuous uh, place on the land if any, if any to which such notice refers. So how notice will be given? Ideally, notice is to be given to the person himself. Sometimes, it, the person may be having some agents, you can give it to the agents also. Sometimes it might happen that you do not know address of the person, there is no agent also. There you can affix a copy of that notice in that certain area. Might be it is an area wherein uh, they want to do eviction. Okay, whom to give a notice? In that area, maybe they can put a notice that this eviction uh, is going on and you have three days to vacate this plot of land. Otherwise, government officers are going to come and vacate this plot of land. Right? Like that, in that affected case also, they can put the notice. Sometimes we see even on newspapers, uh, these kind of notices are being published. Summons and notices. Have you seen anything like that in newspapers? I don't remember, but I have heard uh, about all this. Yeah. So there is one section in the newspaper where they would give all the ads, right? Maybe some job related ads, maybe some marriage related ads, somebody changing name of the person there also they would give notice. Someone disowning his or her son or daughter, those notices are given. Similarly, there itself, in that section itself, these notices are also given. That so-and-so person is summoned to appear in the court, otherwise this will happen. So-and-so notice is given like that, notices are published in newspaper as well. Okay, if the person on whom the notice is uh, to be served resides in any other district, the notice may be sent by post to the deputy commissioner of that district. And he shall be responsible uh, to get it served to the person. If it is from another uh, district, then you just get it transferred to that deputy commissioner, uh, send it by post, and that DC will take care of it, that it gets served to the person. Because they would have better knowledge of the address and everything. So they will make sure it is being done. Then we have modes of inquiry. Two different modes are there, formal inquiry and summary inquiry. So formal inquiry, it is a type of inquiry to determine the question under Karnataka Land Revenue Act 1964 or any other law, the officer himself or somebody in his presence and hearing and under his personal superintendence and direction. Should, uh, take own, uh, should take down evidence either in Canada or English or in any other language as may be prescribed by the state government for use in that district. Such evidence must be signed by the officer conducting the inquiry. Every decision or order uh, after formal inquiry shall contain full statement of grounds and a certificate has to be attached in this regard also. When we talk about summary inquiry, some in summary inquiry, the officer conducting such inquiry shall record his own in his own hand, either in Canada or English, 
or in any other language of that taluka or village the summary of evidence and a minute of the proceedings containing material uh, containing material averment made by the parties interested and also the decision and reasons for the same so the person is going to go there and get the evidences from there that's right? so a person in order to decide on some questions or some uh, matters which has arisen under karnataka land revenue act or under some other law or powers given to the revenue officers they have the power that they can personally go and take down the evidence you should take down the evidence either in kannada english or if any other language is allowed in that district in that it would be taken and such evidence must be signed by the officer conducting the inquiry whoever has conducted the inquiry that person is going to put his signature it may be the revenue officer or somebody subordinate to him also and any decision every decision or order after formal inquiry shall contain full statement of grounds and a certificate will also be attached what is the ground how that decision is being taken everything will be uh, done by them okay in summary inquiry in short they would take down the evidence and minutes of the proceeding that this is what happened this is how we have taken it those will be uh, mentioned and then decision will also be specified that this is the decision we have taken because of so and so ground right whenever decision is being taken always it has to be a reasoned decision reasoning we need to give so that will be provided okay so modes of inquiry is also another power that we have then hearing every hearing whether in a formal or summary inquiry shall be in public and the parties or their recognized agents should be given due notice to it attend the order passed after hearing should be signed and pronounced in open uh, in open court open court on the day which has been notified to the parties or their recognized agents it's not like hearing should happen just like that for hearing parties will be informed that so and so day hearing is there you can come you can attend it whenever they are giving decision whenever they are passing orders that time also they will inform the parties that we are going to pronounce decision on so and so date and it will be in an open court open court as in it's open for the public also to come not like camera trial wherein only parties will be allowed no other person okay it will be in an open court wherein some other person can also enter in case where neither the party nor their recognized agents are present in the court they were given notification they were given notices but they did not appear okay they are not present in the court when the order is pronounced the substance of the order containing the decision should be sent to such party or recognized agent because they were not present they will be given a copy of it where the party fails to appear the proceeding despite due notice of the scene uh, the proceeding should be heard in his absence or dismissed for default and when once uh, such an order has been made by the part, uh, made the party can apply for getting that order set aside by furnishing sufficient cause sometimes it happens that i filed a case in before revenue officer okay and revenue officer has informed the other party that case is being filed appear in the court on so and so particular day now i am only not going there if i only don't go there how is court going to take a decision because i had a problem right i should be going there and explaining it so if i only do not appear court may dismiss the case okay what is dismiss dismissal of case uh closing or rejecting the yeah court is going to say that party is not appearing so we are dismissing all right after that i might maybe i was having some genuine problem why i was absent right so in such cases i can again approach the court and say that whatever order you have passed the order to dismiss the case please set this aside because i had sufficient cause i had a genuine and valid reason maybe i was sick i was hospitalized so i could not come if court is satisfied court is going to set this aside for cases again going to start okay sometimes it may happen that i have filed the case court inform the other party that so and so case is registered against you you come and appear in the hearing 
the party is not coming on in such cases court is going to pronounce a decision in his absence because the other party is not even coming even after repeated uh, uh, notices being served right so in such cases in his absence also a uh, decision may be given so this is nothing but related to hearing uh, what powers are been assigned is this part clear yes sir so this is from unit 3 okay. 